Hello everyone, um, this is the other presentation that I'm going to put together for this week and this is loading data into R. Um, so far in R we have populated vectors, we have used those vectors to populate other vectors, we have been able to combine vectors to make meaningful results, well semi-meaningful results, and you've been able to pl uh, plot your results and show me the plots. But in truth, that's not all that useful, because if we have to sit here and type in the numbers for things like Ruby's money and whoever, um, that's not going to be very useful to you. So what we're going to do this week is we're going to actually load data into R. These are data that come from other data sources. It could be Excel spreadsheets, it could be comma, separated variable files, they could be database files, they could be from a number of different sources. R takes data from many different sources. Um, but we'll go ahead and use Excel. Um, probably we'll use Excel for the rest of the time that we work on this, um, just because it's, it's, it's easy. Um, but just know that the R takes data from any source, or, well, from many sources, I should say. And the real power of R comes from when you load and process data files. It's when you can actually use the tools that are built into R to load data files and then do statistical manipulation of those data files. So we'll focus on this for this week's exercise. I am actually going to give you, I'll post it into the course, I will give you a file to load. It's an Excel spreadsheet called Sales for 2016. Then you can run some commands on it, and we'll actually go through a couple of examples in this presentation. This is really going to build your baseline understanding of R, because you'll learn how to load data files, and then you'll learn to use R to make meaning out of those data files. And so your R skills will just grow from here. So let's step, set the stage a little bit, and then we'll load some data. One thing I feel obligated to talk to you about in R is the use of the working directory. All of you have PCs or Macs on which you have loaded R and RStudio. And when you loaded R and RStudio, R sort of self-identified something called a working directory. And the working directory is where R and RStudio look for your data files when you go to load data. Um, so you can actually figure out what your R, what your working directory is. You can set it and you can modify it. This is really important because the simple load function, there is a load function in R that will allow you to load a data file. And if you use just the name of the data file, the load function will go to your working directory and it will look for that data file. If it cannot find that data file, it will throw you an error saying, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, you can also, if you want to use something other than your working directory, you can put your uh, full directory name um, into R, into the load command. The problem is, is that it does everything backwards. Instead of it being backward slash like it would be in normal DOS, it does it forward slash, and it has to be in parens. So it looks winds up end looking much more like a Linux or a Unix uh, path than a DOS path, but that's just the way that R does it. The nice thing about this is that the loading function in R Studio makes everything much much easier. So we'll actually use that. So this is all kind of small, and I hope you can read it, but it's basically a couple of commands about how to set the working directory. So the first one, of course, is a comment, and the comment is just, we're going to set our working directory. Then we take a, a variable called wd, which is short for working directory, and we set it equal to the results of the function get working directory. So what that does is it goes out and identifies what the working directory is on the machine you're working on, and it pops that into that variable working directory. Then we're going to go ahead and take a look at what that is. So we can do a print command, print working directory, and it will print out the contents of that working directory, which is going to be where R or R Studio is expecting to find all the data files that you want to load in. So it's important that this be kind of synced up with where you think they are. Otherwise, when you try to load them, you'll have all kinds of problems. Um, we can also look and see what's in there. There's a function in R called dir directory, and it's got, you know, you could, I suppose you, you could pass it an argument and the like, but just a simple dir command like that will show you the contents of your working directory or the directory that you're currently in. Um, if you find uh, of your files, uh, you can set a working directory. If you can't find your files, you can actually set a working directory. And that setwd working directory, um, you can either pass it the argument or pass it the value of working directory. So you can set it, which is a little redundant because it's already the working directory. So that's not really a good useful command. But you could also set it a, a specific directory. And that's in the next section down there. I could do set working directory. I put it in parens. I put it in quotes. It's slash users slash Katie Kirstein slash CWU. That then becomes my working directory. So when I do a load command or I want to load data, it's going to look there instead of the default working directory, which is what it would normally do. 
I can also manipulate it a little bit. I can have it go one level down. So I can say set working directory and just have the command in quotes, R files. And that's going to set me to users KD Kirstein CWU slash R files. And it's just going to move me down one level. Uh, on the other hand, I could move back up one level, and those of you familiar with DOS, if you say CD space period period, it moves you up one level in your directory structure or your directory string. Same thing works in R, and you can go back up one structure. So if I actually did that when I was at users KD Kirstein CWU, and I said set working directory to uh, paren quote dot dot close paren close or close quote close paren, it would move me to users KD Kirstein. So that's just a bit about working directory. Um, and the reason why I bring it up is because anybody who's ever used R and tried to load data into R has struggled when the data files are not where they're supposed to be. It's not where R expects them to be. So you either have to move that data file into your working directory, and there are the commands on the screen here to tell you what that is, what, how, to, how to figure out what that is, or you have to specify the specific directory where that data file resides, and you have to use the correct syntax to do that. So assuming we have the right working directory all set up and everything's good, now we're ready to load data. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a command, and there's a comment there, first of all, load your data file dot r data, whatever you called your data file. Um, we're going to actually use the load function. And the load function looks like that third line there. Load, open quote, I'm sorry, load, open paren, open quote, the name of your data file as it appears in your working directory, and then you close everything out. And when you hit that, it will load that into R. It will load into the space in your computer that R has reserved, and it will have that available to you now to be able to use. Here's where more things can go wrong, okay? Now, R is very specific about the data types of the fields. It's very specific about what you can do with certain data types. You can run numerical functions on numerical fields. You cannot run them, of course, on alph alphabetic fields. And in some cases, it's very possible in an Excel spreadsheet to make what looks like a number actually be a character field. And R will read that as a character field and say, nope, you're not going to be able to manipulate this using my mathematical functions. So things can go wrong here. And it's going to be careful. It's going to be important for us to sort of pay attention um, kind of as we dig more into loading our data, or loading data into R, I should say. Um, it's going to be important for us to pay attention to the types of data fields that we're loading. In this particular case, I've done all that work for you. So the data file that you're going to load is already set up. It's already good to go. All right, let's talk about file types. So I already told you you could load data from Excel, you could load data from CSVs, comma separated variables, um, SPSS, and other formats. Um, a lot of these functions, a lot of these uh, applications will allow you dump data out into either CSV or an Excel format, which then you can load into R. So it's just a matter of deciding, okay, I've got data in a SQL database, I want to dump this out into an Excel format or a comment separated variable format, and then I want to go ahead and load that up into R. It's just, so it could be a matter of just putting it to the right format and then loading it from that format into R. We need to be clear about when we load data, we want to make sure that the capabilities are built into R, and that's where load packages or install packages actually can make a difference. There is a package called ReadXL, and ReadXL, if you're using native R or if you're using R Studio for the first time, you may need to install packages ReadXL, and that's the format right there to do that. That is your Excel reader, and that's how it goes out and finds Excel files, knows what the real characters and special characters and all that stuff in that Excel file are, so that it can then interpret that and move that into um, into R. The, um, and once you've of course installed the package, you'll want to go ahead and load that up each time you use it using the library command. Okay, so RStudio does make this easier, and so that's what we're going to use. Um, we'll use the RStudio load tool to import your Excel data file. We'll be able to view the file, we'll be able to look at the headers, we'll be able to view the data types, and then we can start running statistical analysis on the data. So I have an example here. We're going to go into our studio. We're going to load a file. We're going to do four functions. The first function is head, which gives us the head of the file, which lets us see some important information about the first few rows of the file. Then we have another function called nrow, which will allow us to see the number of rows in our file. There's ncall, which will allow us to see the number of columns in our file. And then there's str, which is a function for structure, which will allow us to see some structural information about our file. And then we'll use something, do something useful with the file. Okay, so off we go to RStudio. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this presentation and go to RStudio. And here we are. Okay, so down here in the lower left-hand corner is my import data set. So I can go ahead and click that, 
and I'm going to load in an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to click the Excel from Excel. This is my loader. Now the library is already set up read Excel because it knows I'm going to do Excel. So that's all nice and set for me. It cannot do this if you haven't installed packages read Excel. So you may have to do that the first time just to have that on your computer so that you have it. Okay. Anyway, so let's go get our file and it's browsed just like you would expect any other browser to work. I've actually parked that in my CWU and I've called it sales for 2016. I go ahead and click open. It shows me the file. I have four fields, four columns, and I can now import it. And I have imported my data file into R. Okay. Now we wanted to do a couple of things on it. First of all, we wanted to run a function called head. And I want to go ahead and give it the right name. You notice that it completes for me. It auto completes when there's nothing other than set the fail file that I want that I've typed that matches the characters I've typed in. I can just hit return when it does that, and it gives me what I need. There are the first six rows of my file. Okay, so that's the head command. If I do number of columns and see our number of rows, R O W and row sales completes out. I have 42 rows. One of them is going to be a header row, and I think there might be one extra one in there too, because I think there's only 40, 40 actual rows of data. I can do number of column and and C O L sales four column. Do already know that, so that's not terribly useful, but on a much larger file it would be. And then we can do the str command, str for structure. What is the structure of my file? Sales. And it tells me I got four fields, customer, sales, Christmas, and state of residence. My customer field is a character field. My sales and Christmas fields are numeric fields. And it gives me some information about them, such as um, the range and the different quadrants, that kind of stuff. Um, this is a character field. It gives me the first few headings of them. So that's all useful stuff. So we're going to now move on and actually do some different work with this data file. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint presentation. And we're going to run through a scenario. So with this data file, what I've asked you to do is pretend you're an administrative manager of a major retailer. Your job is to try to establish a predictive model that will help you determine how much each of your customers is likely to spend at your store during Christmas time. So we're going to look at the the uh, sales and try to project how much each customer has is going to buy uh, in the month of December. But to do this, we're actually going to look at all of the previous sales from January 1st through November 30th. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to look at how much did each customer spend in the first 11 months of the year and can that be used as a predictor to determine or help us determine what they're likely to spend at Christmas time. And we're going to use linear regression to do that. So now that we have our data set loaded, we'll use the linear regression model function in R in order to be able to determine the answer to our question. So here's some information about it outside of R in our PowerPoint presentation. And I'm going to go ahead and use this to sort of give you an idea of how this works. So we've loaded the data file already. Now we're going to run linear regression. The linear regression function is LM for linear model. It's very simple. Linear model. It can have a bunch of different settings on it, but this is all we really need. Okay, We're going to look at two fields. We're going to try to predict Christmas, that's our first field, based on sales. Now I want you to note the character that's between Christmas and sales. It's the little tilde sign. It's usually available if you hit the shift uh, quote, which is in the upper left hand corner of your keyboard, but it's often used in R when we're comparing two or manipulating two variables. So once again, the linear model is asking us to project Christmas based on sales. And the last thing we have to tell it is well, what data file are we looking at? So we specify after we put a comma after sales, we specify data equals, and there's the name of our file, the file that we just loaded into R. Okay. It's going to return two things. The first thing it's going to return is the intercept. And the second thing it's going to return is the slope. Well, what does all that mean? Okay. Well, the intercept, and I'll explain this later on the later slide, um, is essentially our starting point. It's our starting point in our scatter plot. 
and the slope is the amount of increase or decrease we can expect to see based on the data that we're looking at. Okay, What this essentially tells us is that for every dollar increase in sales, that's sales between January 1st and November 30th, we can project or project how much that particular customer is going to spend at Christmas. So every dollar increase in sales will be equivalent to some amount of increase, we hope, in spending. Now we can show a scatter plot that actually shows the relationship between those two variables. And we can actually try to think about what does this mean for us? Okay, How can we use this information? So here's a little bit more about this the linear regression or linear modeling function. So we ran the LM function just like I showed you in that first bullet point. It's a little small, but the first bullet point where it says LM Christmas against sales where the data equals sales for 2016. When we do that, R returns the following. Two coefficients. The first one is the intercept. Remember, the intercept is where we start. It's where we basically begin. And what that's basically telling us is that the amount Remember, using sales to predict Christmas. So when sales is set to $30.48, Christmas is set to zero. And that's an important point because intercept is where your line, your linear regression model line, crosses the y-axis. So basically, it's where your other independent or your dependent variable is zero. So once again, let me say that again. The intercept is where your sales crosses zero. And what that means is when you have $30.48 in sales between January 1st and November 30th, you will spend zero or less dollars at Christmas time. Okay? Then the other number comes into play. For every dollar that you spend over $30.48, you are likely to spend 19.17 cents at Christmas time. Okay, well, that doesn't sound like a lot of money, but imagine somebody spending $600 between January 1st and November 30th. Now you do the math on that and you determine just how much they're likely to spend at Christmas time, and it turns out to be kind of a bigger amount, right? So the LM function gives us the intercept and it gives us the slope. That number underneath sales is the slope, and it determines how uh, steep your increase is going to be as you add more dollars to your. Uh, intercept amount. Um, so what does this tell us? This basically tells us a customer, again, once again, a customer who spent $30.48 or less between November or January 1st and November 30th will probably not spend anything at Christmas time or spend very little at Christmas time. For each dollar that the customer spends over $30.48, it's actually $30.48, yeah, we can now calculate what they're likely to spend at Christmas time. So let's take a couple of examples. Example number one, a customer who spent 100 bucks between January 1st and November 30th, November 30th, I should say November 30th, not November 1st, is likely to spend $49.65 at Christmas time. A customer who spent $250 bucks between January 1st and November 30th is likely to spend $78.48 at Christmas time. Okay. Now remember, these are approximations and they're based on the data set that we fed in. There's going to be an error associated with most of these measurements. Very rarely will they be exact, but it just gives us an idea of what we can expect if a customer spent X during the year, they're likely to spend Y at Christmas time. Let's take a look at how this might look on a scatter plot. So remember, we're looking at sales predicting Christmas. And here are our sales. Okay, and here is our, actually got the other way around. Nope. Do I have it the other way around? Uh... Yes, this is sales and this is Christmas, okay? So it's an important point to note that when sales is equal to $30.48, that's what this level is here, that Christmas is equal, this is Christmas here, this Christmas is equal to zero. So as sales goes up, Christmas also goes up at a relatively related uh, rate. So you see that all of these data points around the trend line sort of help define where that trend line goes. And we can see that there are some outliers. This one is far higher in sales than it is in Christmas. And this one over here is far higher in Christmas than it is in sales. 
So we are not always going to be 100% on, but we're going to be close enough that we can actually project with some level of certainty what our data points, what our values are going to be. All right. So we already talked about using some examples. Let's actually illustrate what those examples are. So we are using sales to predict our Christmas value. And we're going to bring in the intercept and the slope, which is what the LM function gives us. All right. So this is our input value. This is our sales value. So if somebody spends 100 bucks during the first part of the year, we will calculate that by taking $30.48, remember that's your starting point, that's your intercept, and we will add 0.1917 times 100. So that all calculated out and added up is what gives us our $49.65. Same thing if we do 250. We do 250, the order of operations has us actually doing this first, so 250 times 0.1917 gives us a value that we then add to the intercept to calculate out the total value or the output value. So using this model, we can now predict, based on sales, how much any customer is likely to spend at Christmas time. All we need are the sales values, the intercept, and the slope. So we plug our sales variables into the function, and we calculate and come out with our Christmas value. So you can sort of see the value in this model. Um, the value in this model is that it is going to be useful for us to be able to determine where are we going to spend our advertising dollars? If we can actually calculate a, a slope and an intercept and a sales value and use that to calculate Christmas, who do we want to market to? Do we want to market to the people who are likely to spend a lot at Christmas time? Do we want to market to the people who are not likely to spend a lot at Christmas time? Try to get them to spend more. But it gives us information to help us make decisions, better decisions. So why don't we just use Excel? You know you can do linear modeling in Excel. Um, it's a little more complex, um, but there's a lot of functions that we've done so far in R, like mean, median, and those kinds of things. Even scatter plots, you can use. You can just use Excel for. At some point, those Excel is going to run out. Um, it's going to run out of resources, and it's going to run out of functions. So Excel, in many older versions, usually are very well, always only loaded 65,000 rows. In the latest versions of Excel, they've expanded that to over 1 million rows, but that still could be a limitation. You still could have data sets that are bigger than that. Excel supports some statistical analyses, but they're just easier in R. Um, the linear modeling function in Excel is a lot more complex, and we already saw earlier in the quarter how k-means clustering is kind of a monster in Excel, where in R it's actually pretty easy. Um, and then some, there are some statistical tests that are just not even supported at all in Excel. So we can use Excel for the easier stuff, but eventually we're going to need to move over to R because R gives us the functionality that we don't have in Excel. None of that is really probably going to apply to us. You know, the giant data sets or the super complex statistical analysis, we're probably not going to get to that level. Um, but just know that while there's a lot of stuff you can do in Excel, it's an amazing package and an amazing product. Um, R sometimes it makes things easier or it makes things possible. So here's your assignment. Um, we're going to do a linear model by state. But before we do that, I'm actually going to go back and show you uh, some examples. Um, I, I want to show, I want to go back to this example here where we use linear regression, the LM function. And I'm going to cut over to our studio and I'm going to show you how we would do that. So remember I told you that we would use LM, that's the function. And we're going to have to go ahead and specify the First of all, we're going to specify the outcome variable. In this case, it's going to be Christmas. And we're going to compare that using that tilde to sales. So we will derive Christmas based on sales. And our data file that we're going to use is the one we just loaded. And again, because it's the only data file available to me, when I get enough of it and it can identify what I'm talking about, I can just hit return. It will complete the command for me, hit return again, and it will run my calculations. You can see here, I've got my coefficients. Intercept is 30.48. That's how I got my $30.48. This is the amount um, of sales where Christmas is zero. So anybody who spends $30.48 or less, very unlikely to spend anything at Christmas time. As that number goes up at this rate, this is your slope. And this is the variable that determines your slope. So as sales goes up by 0.1917, intercept will also increase at a very linear rate. And that's what's shown to us in our 
model here and what we can use to actually predict those values that we saw right there. Okay. Now I'm going to have you do one and I have assigned each of you a state or a pair of states. If you notice in the data file that I had you load, there are state designators. So what I'm going to have you do is take that data file. You'll get the access to the Excel data file. I'm going to have you go through and create a new Excel data file. You can call it whatever you want, but it's going to contain only those data points that have your state or your states. There's more, more of you than there are of states, so I had to pair some states up for you. I want you to go ahead and create that Excel spreadsheet and save it in a place where you're going to know where it's at and give it a name that is going to make sense to you. Load that data file into R, just like I showed you. Then run a, your, run a linear regression model on the Christmas and sales variables to see the extent to which sales is able to predict Christmas. So you're going to get an intercept and you're also going to get a slope. And you'll see it just like I showed you before. So tell me what your intercept and slope are. Explain to me the meaning of your model. You know, what is, what is the point at which Christmas is zero? And then how much does Christmas go up for every dollar of sales? Give me a couple of examples. And then also put together a scatter plot for your states. You should be able to do a plot command for sales and Christmas to show me how that comes out. So your state assignments are thus. Um, each of you have been assigned either one state or a combination of states. So go ahead and build your Excel spreadsheet just using the data from that particular combination or that particular single state. And at the end, submit to me the process of loading your data file, the LM command that you ran, to actually get your scope and your intercept, and then of course give me your scope and your intercept results. Uh, just like I said before, give me an explanation of what it means, and give me a scatter plot of Christmas versus sales for your particular area. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'm here on email. 